Hello, everyone. Coach Joe, Coach Taylor, here with Diamond Talk, episode nine. Here, brought to you by In the Zone Baseball and Softball Academy in Flanders, New Jersey. Uh, I got some very cool stuff planned for you. I'm going to talk about how to control a run game for a pitcher. I'm also going to address nutrition before a game for a pitcher, and I guess just an athlete in general. Coach has an interview with Amy. She is our director of softball operations. She's also the varsity coach. Wayne Hills. What else you got, Coach? Uh, ITZ gear this week, and it's going to be featuring the Precision Impact Ball. We're going to go over some of the benefits that it can, uh, not only for, it can give you, but not only for hitters, as well as uh, on defense for infielders, outfielders, and catchers especially. Stay tuned. So guys, a couple tips here that are going to help you and your catcher uh, prevent the run game. You know, a lot of times the catcher actually gets a lot of uh, slack here or not being able to throw guys out, a lot of times it's the pitcher that causes the runner to steal a base. So I got three things. I always like to break things up so kids can understand it better. Three things here that can prevent a base runner from getting a good jump or stealing the base entirely. So the first thing I want to do is I want to be able to mix up my looks. What this means is I want to go from looking at first base or second or whatever base the, uh, the base runner is at. Let's just say he's at first base. So I want to look at first base, back to home, back to first, back to home, and I want to do a pretty good job of mixing this up. The first pitch, I might look once and go to the plate. Next, I might go two or three, then go to the plate. This causes a little bit of confusion for the base runner. The second thing is how long I hold the ball. This is especially good for runners that are a little bit quicker. They start to get heavy feet. They don't know when they should take their secondary or when they should straight steal. I literally will just sit here four or five seconds, mixing up my looks as well. Next time, I might go really quick. If I only do one look, bam, throw it to the plate. The third and final one, and this is very, um, it's kind of overlooked, actually at the youth level, is when a runner's on base, you need to be quick to the plate. This doesn't mean just rush through my delivery and have my load position and all that good stuff we've talked about earlier completely out of whack. I want to make sure that I'm in good positions while getting the ball out of my hands to the catcher to let him do his job. So what I'm trying to do, when I get everything settled, I'm going to have one or two looks, decent hold time, and instead of taking my leg and lifting it up, so the base runner can take a secondary or just steal, I'm going to be a little bit quicker. I'm going to take my front leg and never let it get past my waist. That's a pretty good way to make sure runners don't steal on you. A lot of the ownership is still put on the catcher when someone steals a base. Believe it or not, it's uh, as equally on the pitcher as it is the catcher. So. In a pop time, a good pop time is sub two. You want to be under two seconds from when the catcher catches the ball and uh, the second baseman or the shortstop catches the ball at second base. What's kind of overlooked is the pitcher's time to the plate. So the pitcher will take maybe one five, maybe a, a second and a half to the plate. That's probably the, the highest amount of time you want. If there's anything over than that, it's going to be a little tough for the catcher to throw him out, even if he has a really good pop time of maybe a 1-9. Because when you add those two together, there's no way the base runner is not at second base already. So today I'm going to go over the precision impact ball with you guys. All this is is a weighted ball. It's got either sand or some sort of liquid in it. Uh, I use this personally in my lessons, both hitting uh, as well as with catchers and even sometimes with infielders. Uh, just working on creating stronger hands. Uh, for the hitters, I use this ball on staying connected with the front shoulder to the on using the whole body to hit the baseball. Uh, one of the great benefits of this thing is, is that it allows a hitter to feel where the body is positioned at the point of contact. Baseball hitters and softball hitters are accustomed to hitting a ball multiple times, so they know, you know that they're hitting something. This, because it's heavier, it gives them a little bit more substance when they hit and allows them to feel where their body could be positioned correctly or incorrectly. So what I'll generally do is, I don't like to toss this thing. I like to have just kids hit it and work on staying connected. I'll talk to them about keeping their front shoulder in line with the ball and using their back hip to not only rotate off of, but to get their weight transferred properly. It's just, like I said, it gets more of the, uh, of the body involved in the swing, and it allows the hitter to really feel where they are in position when they make contact. While using this in my catching lessons, I generally work on uh, using creating better hand strength and sticking strength with the catchers. You can use this with a glove, barehanded. I like to progress from a barehanded, softer toss 
to having a kid put his glove on and just rifling at them a little bit quicker than that uh, just so they can work on staying strong. This is also a great tool for working on low pitches. Low pitches for catchers is a very hard pitch to frame or a very hard pitch to steal. Uh, by using this, it makes the ball or the hand a little bit lighter so that when they come through the ball, they can really feel like they're sticking it uh, when they get the baseball in their hand or in their glove. So guys, uh, a big part of being an athlete in general, not just a pitcher, is taking your body serious. Uh, what you put into your body is eventually going to translate to the field. So underneath this sweatshirt, I have rock hard abs. As everyone here knows, I take nutrition very serious. So you want to be able to have long-term energy as well as short-term energy. So you want to have uh, brown rice and all kinds of good grains before you pitch for the long-term energy. If you're going to be pitching, you know, you expect to pitch more than five, six innings, that's obviously a good idea. Fruit, veggies, those are great just to maintain uh, health and, and just to get all the vitamins in that you need to pitch. Uh, but the long-term energy, like the carbs, are really, really important. Um, the last thing that I want to focus on, if you get tired in an outing, your mechanics suffer. And if your mechanics suffer, you're putting your elbow and shoulder in, in pretty much any joint that you have in some kind of trouble. The pitching motion is an extremely volatile motion. It's not really, really the human body is not meant to throw overhead. So you got to take care of your body. Nutrition starts, um, you know, days before you start. It's not just that day. Taking care of your body is absolutely huge. Coach Taylor here, here with Coach Amy, our new director of softball over here at In The Zone. Coach, welcome aboard. First year with the program. Thank you. Good to be here. Uh, coach Amy, for those of you who didn't know, is actually the head coach over at Wayne Hills High School, their varsity softball program. How are you guys doing this year so far, Coach? Oh, well, it's, it's a little bit of a rough year. Uh, you're going to have those years, but a um, little bit disappointing. We kind of had a high hopes for the year. Five seniors, but good group of girls. They work hard every day. Um, looking to end the season well with some wins and uh, hopefully make a run in the state. So we'll see how it goes. They always say it's not about how you start, it's about how you finish. Absolutely, yep, absolutely. So what do you guys, what are some of the things you guys do to prepare for the win, like throughout the course of the winter for the season? Um, well, just because of New Jersey laws, uh, I'm not really allowed to have weight, uh, a lot of contact with them in the, the fall and the winter, but I do encourage them to do a lot of off-season training. So um, we, on Sunday nights usually, we have kind of like a clinic that we run. Um, I'm not allowed to be there, but we have other uh, people that run it. Um, lifting, strength and conditioning. Um, a lot of girls play a lot of off-season sports, basketball, winter sports, which I encourage them to do, um, as long as they're staying in shape um, and keeping their softball skills sharp. So. That's awesome. That's awesome. So how do you like being part of the ITZ family? I love it. It's, it's a lot of fun being here. Um, they're a great group of girls. It's, it's definitely one family. I feel like it's a big community here. Um, and I, I'm just so glad to be a part of this, and it's definitely an honor. Um, looking for big things, kind of as we grow and continue the program. Um, just, I'm really looking forward to developing the program and just seeing how far we can take these girls. So that being said, what are some of the things that you have on the horizon for the program, the softball program specifically? Uh, well, big things this year, uh, we have our showcase team, which is, uh, at least as far as I'm concerned, the first time in a while that we've had a showcase team, um, which is really the ultimate goal, what we want for these girls, is especially that they, if they want to play at the, the next level, the college level. Um, so I think this provides them with an opportunity to do that, and we're looking to, to kind of make some strides there and develop the program there and I mean I would love for us to develop the softball program as much as the baseball program is developed here um, and make it one of the best in the states I would love to, to do that so that's our goal that's yeah our goal absolutely much much. everybody that's coach Amy you can catch her around the facility pretty much all the time coach Amy <laughs> good luck thank you does it for episode nine here Diamond Talk ITZ TV two players of the week me and Matt Azinski, Rachel McQueen Rachel had five hits this weekend we had uh, two extra base hits we had a triple and a single in the first game they said the second game and a double and a single in the third game. Coach, how did Mia do? Uh, Coach Carly couldn't stop raving about how well Mia did in the circle uh, over the weekend. Uh, and she also had some great at-bats. She kept mentioning about how she really worked some great counts to put the ball and play hard. You can find us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat. Nope, not Snapchat, not Snapchat yet. Yes. Snapchat. LinkedIn, Google+, Plus, Instagram. and Instagram. See you guys. Interesting.